Nearly 3,000 miles away lies the most well-protected, secretive, and off-limits government building in the world. In the hills and hollows of Kentucky, from the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln to the famed racetrack at Churchill Downs, the Bluegrass State is the home of uniquely American icons. But perhaps no other landmark in the country holds as much mystery, allure, and fascination as the United States Bullion Depository known to millions as Fort Knox. I will say to you that the Gold Vault is the single most secure place in the world. Here at Fort Knox, we have somewhere around about 300 tanks. Tremendous amount of firepower. I know it's heavily guarded. A lot of mystery around it. People don't talk about it. And it seems like sometimes you really shouldn't ask questions about it. That's exactly what the government wants to keep its secrets intact inside this innocuous looking stone and steel building. In fact, Kentucky native former Senator Walter Huddleston is one of the few to have ever seen Fort Knox from the inside. But that was long ago. And now Huddleston, like the rest of the world, can only view the vault from a distance. Well, there it is, the gold vault. This is as close as we can get to it. You're not permitted to take pictures of the gold vault by standing in front of it uh, or nearby. You could expect that an MP would be right on you very quickly. With photography off limits, no access cameras capture these rare and unauthorized images of the vault. But preventing picture taking is just a small part of a government security system that keeps any knowledge about the gold vault to a precious authorized few. Daniel Stewart is one of the country's foremost security experts. But when it comes to the enigmatic gold vault, even he hits a dead end. In discussing the security of Fort Knox, I can't go into particulars, and quite honestly, I, I don't know the, the specifics of the system, which is good. That's a measure of, of, in part, of how effective their security is. It's a security system that changes constantly. From vault codes to guard placements, no two days are ever the same. If those security measures were to, were to be uh, intruded, upon Fort Knox and all of its power stands ready to ensure that anybody who may be thinking of such act will be dealt with. Now, now, now that's as much as I can tell you without having to take and put you in jail following that. <laughs> Secrecy has been part of the legacy of this short, foreboding structure from the day Fort Knox was built. 1934. Americans face a depression at home and the threat of war abroad. In a controversial move, Franklin Roosevelt signs the Gold Act, stabilizing currency by giving the government title to all private collections of gold in the U.S. America's gold is melted down into thousands upon thousands of gold bars. With the Fort Knox Army Base already in place, the government chooses the Bluegrass State as the best location to store the gold. Fort Knox was about a thousand miles inland. It was past the Appalachian Mountains, which are a major obstacle in itself. Plus, at Fort Knox, they had a large contingency of military available on a moment's notice. Construction begins in 1935. Workers lay a 10-foot thick foundation slab to support the 21,000 ton granite, steel, and concrete fortress that will house the vault. As construction progresses, engineers at the Mosler Safe Company in Chicago work simultaneously to create the 27-inch thick steel and concrete inner vault. Okay, these are the microfish cards that we pulled from the uh, order jacket. Dick Gardner, director of engineering at Mosler, shows us some of the original plans for the Knox vault. I doubt it if anybody's opened these up since 1935. That's the big door, that's the big frame that the door fits in. You can see it's a... Over the decades, the vault would prove to be a design of unique strength. In 1952, the Department of Defense hauls a similar Mosler vault out to the Nevada desert to test it against forces that its designers could never have imagined. This was one of the first nuclear tests that they did to see what the radiation and some of the blasts would do to the vault. We actually got pictures of the vault door after it was open, and it withstood the attack. Up next, the fortunate few who've seen the gold. 
gold. It really is in here. I can tell you, I've seen it. When No Access Returns. Fort Knox, Kentucky. On January 13, 1937, the U.S. mail delivers the first shipment of gold to the depository vault. In its well guard, it vaults has stored millions in gold bullion and silver bars. Frequently, the passers-by stop to watch the careful transfer of precious metal. Over a quarter of a million gold bars are moved into the vault. The estimated value today, $15.5 billion. Once the gold was put in there, as I understand it, they more or less sealed it up. They are the U.S. Mint Police, the only ones to be allowed on the grounds. With airtight security in place, the U.S. government lowers a dark screen of secrecy over the depository, inspiring a mythical status of invulnerability. Since the 1930s, visitors who come hoping for a glimpse of Fort Knox's golden wealth quickly find out that the gold vault is the world's most heavily guarded and least accessible fortress. Yet over the decades, the draw has remained so strong that an entire tourist industry flourishes around a landmark that no one is allowed to visit. Doug Simmons, manager of the Gold Vault Inn, grew up here and knows the town's history and its secrets. This is Muldraw, Kentucky, and according to the legends of this area, this is the only town in America that's built on one side of the street. On the opposite side of the road, is the Fort Knox military reservation over there. Just about all the businesses in this area play off the name Gold Vault. Behind me, you'll see the Golden Manor Hotel. And immediately in front of me is the uh, Meade County Bank, which is a pretty good representation of the Gold Vault. This door is almost an exact reproduction of what you see at the Gold Vault. Um, it's made out of very similar rock. The only difference is at the Bullion Depository, above this door is a seal that is made out of actual gold. And that is the only gold that's visible to the public outside from the building. If Doug Simmons seems to know a lot about the details of Fort Knox, it's with good reason. He's been inside the gold vault thousands of times. My love affair with gold bars ended a lot of years ago. It began with a phone call that Simmons received when he was just 17. I think it was a Saturday, and a man on the other end of the phone asked me if I would like a job. And uh, I told him, well, what kind of job? And he said, well, I can't tell you. So I told him I wasn't interested because the guy wouldn't tell me anything. He didn't even identify who he was. But when a friend tells Simmons he's accepted the same offer, Simmons